On its edges, my pop work is life when it's calm. Blocks up on love in its center. If I could live here forever, think it'd be for the better. I love the weather, even though it's fog 24 7. I love the people. This is city, I met all my best friends, and I wanna thank every break. I wanna thank every entrance to every building that I step in. In this city of mine, oh, you most my best moments in life. See, I fell in love for the first time in Golden Gate Park I saw my first rap show at Great American Hall I used to beg my homies for a ride across the bridge to goof off And spend the whole damn day doing whatever we want Keep drove us down to Ice Place while we roll up a blunt And me and Jack would get stony, walk around and get lost Don't think I'll ever truly pay back all I was lucky to get Just by walking through the city, no, I'm a small part of this What is going on everybody? So welcome to the gym tour. So we're gonna start off just kind of over in this corner. Um, as you guys kind of saw with that little bit of a B-roll segment, we've got a lot to go through. So I'm gonna try and keep this as quick as possible. Wife is also holding the heavy ass camera. So we're gonna try and make this as easy on her as we can. So we're gonna start here with probably one of the best parts of the gym and that is the bar rack. So this is a nine bar holder from Titan. It's just a vertical bar, bar storage unit. Um, in it, we've got a few different things. There's the pink Bella bar, which is my wife's. We have in the center here, um, it is a Bella bar. It was actually one of their like specials, kind of like, it's not a boneyard bar, um, but it's kind of like a seconds bar because it's got a little bit of different things going on here and there, but basically it's our beater bar. Beater bar. It's also like my poor man's deadlift bar. Um, then we've got my trusty Rogue Ohio Power Bar, Cerakote Red. Um, in the back here, we have the Banbell Rhino Flex Bar. Uh, behind that, if you guys may remember, I'll throw a link up at the cards here. Um, it is my DIY Banbell or Earthquake Bam or Earthquake Bar that I made out of PVC. Then coming around the other side, notice I'm saving these two for last. We have a Rogue Camber Bar. And finally, these two bars are both Kabuki bars. This one is a Kabuki Cadillac bar. This was actually a Christmas present from my wife, thank you, uh, which took almost three months to get here, so it only actually got here about a month ago. And next to it is the Kabuki Duffalo bar. Definitely an amazing bar. The knurling on it is completely unique to anything I've ever felt, um, and this bar is by far probably one of my favorite bars for squatting. Uh, amazing bar, if you ever get a chance to use one or get a used one, jump on it. Great bar, I held off for a while because they're pricey, but it's worth the price. Okay, moving along, this kind of storage here, or this back section here is just storage for all of our other stuff, tools, ski boots. We've got storage along the ceiling just to try and get stuff off the floor and off the walls to open up space for as much equipment and as much stuff as possible. So as you can see, this is probably one of my favorite pieces of the gym. This is a five to 100 pound set of Troy Pro Style rubber coated dumbbells. And with these, I got them for a screaming deal with the racks. Um, I paid just about a dollar a pound on them, which if you guys know anything about dumbbells, you know that that's like a quarter of the price new. So a crazy deal. I don't think I'll ever get rid of these unless I were to get like some Watsons or something, which are insanely expensive. Um, so yeah, these are probably one of my favorite things in the gym. Use them all the time. I really need to go through and like refurbish them a little bit. They're getting a little dusty, but Eh, that'll be a, different, a video for a different time. Now, coming down here, we've got a few different kettlebells. All of the kettlebells are from Rep Fitness. Mainly use these lighter ones for my, bamboo, uh, my bamboo bar. Um, I also use them just kind of for different, like, I don't know, mobility stuff. Nothing crazy, I don't do a whole lot of kettlebell stuff except for the heavier one there. I use that one for swings and warm-ups a lot. Um, Moving on, we have a couple of slam balls. Pick those up on like a super sale from Walmart. I believe we got them for like $10 or less for both of them. So like a crazy good sale about a year and a half ago. 
And yeah, they don't get used too much anymore, but they're wall balls, fun to use. Uh, moving into this corner. So this is a new piece from the last video that you guys will have seen. Uh, this is a Life Fitness seated leg extension. Stack goes up to 255 pounds. You might be wondering why it looks like this, why I've got a block of wood here. Well, because with this thing, it's great. You can use it for a lot of different stuff. In fact, you, had, you set up a little piece of wood underneath there, you throw it on your knees, you got a calf raise. Not that anybody ever trains their calves, but <laughs> don't want to forget my phone there. But this is an awesome piece. This is one of my um, kind of dream pieces, not necessarily this brand, but just a leg extension in general was something that I really wanted to get in the gym when I first started it. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces for training and isolating the legs. So definitely, definitely jumped on that when I had it come up um, sometime last year. Behind there, there is a Rep Fitness sandbag. Uh, goes up to 125 pounds. Right now, I don't use it very much. I think we use it mainly just to weigh down the cars during the winter. So it's definitely nothing very fancy. Got another one over here that we use as well. Um, that one I actually use a little bit more often. Use it often for like just overhead carries, walking up and down the street, things like that. Um, but over here, the next new piece that you guys will see is the Cybex leg press. This again, I got from the same place that I got the leg extension. Screaming deal on this guy. I actually paid, I think it was $250 for this, which considering I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I cleaned up and sold with both of these, I basically got it for free. I actually made money off of that and once I sold everything I didn't need. So yeah, but a leg press was also, it was another piece of equipment that I was like, really wanting to have, but it takes up so much space, especially traditional leg presses, um, which this one is really nice just because of how compact it is. The weight horns stick out a pretty good ways, but the machine itself is very compact when compared to other leg presses. So awesome piece here. If you guys have used this before, you know it's one of the best leg presses on the market. A um, little old school. Only downside, doesn't have a safety catch on the bottom, so you kinda do or die when you go heavy on that guy. <laughs> now, moving into this corner, behind this guy, this is the Rep Fitness FT5000 Functional Trainer. Um, behind it, bunch of storage and crap like that. Probably end up sticking the snowblower here during the winter, but this guy is an awesome piece to have. Luckily, um, I did a lot of measuring before I got this guy into the gym and it barely fits with the garage door open. I've got about two inches of clearance. It barely fits. That was one of the main requirements for it. I actually had an opportunity to buy uh, a Life Fitness uh, commercial grade functional trainer when I purchased these other things for, I don't know, I think it was about a thousand bucks, but it wouldn't have fit pretty much anywhere in this gym in the garage just because of how much bigger it is. So this guy works for what I needed. It's commercial grade. It was actually, it's actually from Rep Fitness's commercial equipment line. Um, this is a little bit older model. It still has the Victory branding on the front, on the sides. It doesn't actually say Rep Fitness, but it is from Rep Fitness. Uh, if you guys are interested, let me know down below if you want me to do a full detailed review, kind of everything on this, my thoughts and things like that. So moving on, I have modified this just a little bit. I've taken a piece of um, plywood, painted it white, cut it down, and attached it to the back of the machine. So with this, I then attached a couple of wall control panels. So they're basically metal pegboards. We've got a few more on the other side of the gym that you'll see soon. And I use them to hold a bunch of different cable attachments. I've got a um, special bin down here that I use to hold all my knee wraps, my knee straps bunch of different accessories, things like that. Uh, nothing too fancy on here. I will say these guys, the Prime Fitness Rotate Handles, we just got them in this past week. So far, I've only used them a handful of times. They're some of the best cable attachments I think I've ever used for most movements. Few movements they kind of don't work for, anything where you're kind of pressing, but for the most part, would highly recommend picking up a set of those if you haven't seen them before. All right, moving on. Now, kind of back here, we've got just a whiteboard. Use it to track our workouts from time to time. Um, shove back in the corner. 
nothing gym related, but I have my one wheel. We've also got a foam roller. Use this guy almost every time I work out, just a nice warm up. Um, this is the centerpiece of the gym. So this guy is my Rep Fitness PR 4000. Yeah, 4000. Their part numbering system is all kinds of crazy, but it's the PR 4000 power rack. This is basically the largest model that they offered in this model. So it's 91 inches high, um, 41 inches deep. It has the extra weight storage attached. It's got the front feet. The only thing I don't have for it are the flip down safeties and the spotter arms, which I might be getting a set of spotter arms sometime in the future, just because it'd be nice to have a set come out the front. But for the most part, this guy is awesome. I've got a lot of different attachments on it. I've customized it quite a bit to kind of fit what I need. And overall, this thing has been a great purchase. The only thing I probably would have changed if I were to do it again is instead of going 41 inches, I probably would have gone with 30 just to save a little bit of space. Um, but at the time I got it, the difference was like 50, $75. So I figured just go big or go home, go big in the home. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so a few more things as we're kind of walking around, this guy is just a DIY military bench that I set up. Um, I got these pads and a couple more pads off of Craigslist or Facebook for like $5, $10. Um, decided I'd use them to build just kind of a seated military bench. Ideally, I'd like to replace that, except that the they're usually like five, $600 for a stinking little upright bench. So I'm not gonna be spending that unless I find a nice used one sometime soon. Another thing I've got over here is my deadlift jack. This was one of the first things that I purchased for the gym, mainly just cause I wanted it. I figured if I'm gonna have a setup in here, then I'm gonna get stuff that I like. And this was something that I really wanted. So just something nice about not having to bend over and like pick the bar up to load off the weights and it just kind of all that hassle. So. Awesome, great, definitely recommend it, yada, yada, yada. Moving over again to the rack. Let's move inside here real quick. Ugh. Got a bunch of different random things attached to it. So, first and foremost, get this out of the way. There we go. All right, so inside the rack, first thing you can see are the monolift attachments. These are the Titan X3 monolift attachments for their Titan X3 line. These are the adjustable ones, work extremely well. A lot of people say they have issues with clearance, um, but I've never had any issues with them. They are probably one of my favorite things that I've purchased for this rack. Uh, I never use the regular J cups anymore, except for maybe like bent over rows, overhead pressing, things like that. Squatting, benching, anything else, I'm using these guys. And they are definitely, again, another thing that is worth the money. Uh, pretty much anything in this gym, if I still have it, it's something that I feel is personally worth getting. <laughs> um, now behind it, you can see we've got speaker system. I've got a few lenses on there that I need to bring inside. I was doing some photography earlier of stuff. Uh, but speaker system, I've got chains. These are the Titan 5 8 inch chains, I believe. And then they're attached to the Elite FTS Easy Loaders. I've got both the long and the short for squat and bench um, and deadlift. Definitely chains are a really nice thing to have. Very few like commercial gyms have them. So it was something that I really wanted to get when I started the gym. Um, I've used them a few times and they're a great way to add accommodating resistance. Not necessarily cheap though. That's the only downside. Let's see. So something that you guys didn't see or you saw and I didn't talk about are my plates. One thing you might notice compared to the last video are I have a few less reds than I did before. So originally I purchased the 1000 pound or like 459 kg kilogram set from Rogue during one of their Black Friday sales. Uh, but I almost never am using more than three reds at a time. So I decided, hey, I'm not gonna need these with prices pretty much like through the roof last year. I decided I'd just list them up on Facebook, see if anybody wanted them for basically the cost that they would be new, uh, minus shipping, just cause I paid $5 for shipping. So with that, I ended up selling off four sets of them. 
uh, basically paid for all of these, which was awesome. Um, but I have gotten, again, strong enough to the point where it's like, kind of wish I had one more set of reds. I'm not gonna worry about it though. The only thing I would like more plates for is the leg press. It is a bit annoying having to carry plates to and from the leg press from time to time, but eh, I don't wanna spend money on, I don't wanna spend like two, three dollars a pound for plates right now when I don't need them. Um, now, if we kind of back up a little bit, you can see this is another new piece that we have here. This is the Titan Fitness Selectorized Lat Pull Down and Low Row. So you kind of can see, I've got this guy in front of the low row section. This was a fairly new addition to the gym. We got it a few months back. Um, by far one of the best value lat pull downs, unless you can find a used one for significantly cheaper uh, that I, have seen on the market. Stat goes up to 300 pounds, more than I'll ever need, maybe for low rows, but at the most I use maybe like 200 pounds. So this guy is awesome. It's got the band peg attachment. So if you needed to use bands, you could use bands. And overall, would highly recommend this if you guys are on the fence about it. I think the closest competitor in terms of like price and quality might be Frey Fitness. However, I do know that like Rogue has their option, but it's almost three grand, not including shipping. And also you have the issue of it coming pre-assembled and all that kind of stuff. This guy came in a nice big wooden crate on a pallet and it was pretty easy to assemble by myself. Um, I had a couple points where I needed a hand from Kate, my wife, um, but overall the thing was super easy and quick to assemble. Definitely recommend that. Now, kind of hard to see, but back in this corner are the uh, other wall control panels that I was talking about. Now on here are a few different things. We've got some actual mag grips, which if you guys know what mag grips are, you know they're some of the best cable attachments for lap pull downs, low rows, that kind of stuff uh, currently on the market. And then we also have the kind of knockoff ones that I got from Walmart. And these guys surprisingly are extremely nice for the price. I think for all five of them, these four that I have here and the one that's still on the machine, I paid $130 and it was free shipping versus the mag grips are like $80 a piece plus shipping. So for the price of less than two mag grips, less than those two, I got basically five of almost the same thing and they work extremely well. Uh, I don't know if I would do them in like a commercial gym setting, but for a home gym, they're just as nice as the mag grips. Um, on here, we also have all my different sets of bands. We've got a couple different uh, like hip circles, things like that, shorty bands, long bands, mobility stuff. Um, we've got a couple belts here, the pink. This one's mine, yeah. Now this is my wife's. Um, she has the Pioneer, this is a custom Pioneer belt, and she also has on it the Pioneer PAL system, which we got recently. It's basically their adjustable lever, which is pretty nice. I've actually, because she hasn't been able to use it for the past nine months, I was the one using it recently once we got this installed, just giving it a try, and works really nice. If I wanted a lever, I'd go for a lever. But this one's my police public call box. If you guys know what that is, Allons-y. That is not a custom belt. It is actually an Inzer belt, forever lever belt, or forever single prong belt, 10 millimeter that I got almost eight years ago and painted myself. So it's held up extremely well. I think I've actually drilled an extra hole in it for, was that for, I think that was so that my wife could use it one time back when she was super skinny and wanted to give my belt a try. I drilled an extra hole for it right in the center of the X. So yeah, <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's pretty much the entire gym. I mean, and you can take a look and just kind of step back here. Uh, the other thing that we have going on here, just kind of looking down at the floor, is a deadlift platform. With this, I've got band pegs on it so that I can basically do different types of band pulls. Again, adding different types of accommodating resistance. Um, the platform that my rack is sitting on is also a home-built platform. It's got two layers of OSB underneath the stall mats on top. And then in the center, we have a stained and polyurethane sheet of nice plywood. Personally, if I were to do this again, 
Honestly, at this point, I don't know that I would build a rack for my, or build a platform for my rack. The rack, I would probably just put down directly onto the concrete, uh, or at least onto mats that are sitting on the concrete, and I would only build a platform for deadlifts. I originally built the platform because I was having to lift inside of the rack back when we first started the gym because I basically wanted to limit everything and compact all the space as much as possible. So I was doing all my deadlifts in the rack in order to prevent damaging the floors. But at this point, I really don't think if I was to do it again, which when we eventually move, we will be doing it all again. I honestly don't think I will be using this platform. I'll probably just put the rack directly onto some mats on the ground and go that way and then have a separate deadlift platform entirely. Cause I'm not doing anything inside the rack that requires that extra surface area, that extra space or that extra material that a platform would have. And also the plywood in the center, it's so smooth that I can't really do like, you can see here I'm in socks and I'm just sliding all over the place versus if I'm sitting on the mats, I'm not going anywhere. So it's like, I can't lift in socks in here. I can't, I have to either be shoes or barefoot. And sometimes when during the winter, when it's cold out, I like to be wearing just my socks. I don't like to be wearing shoes, but I don't want to be barefoot because it's cold and I can't do anything in the rack if I'm wearing socks. So it just kind of sucks. Um, even with shoes, sometimes I've noticed if the rack is kind of dusty, it, is easy to slip as well. So yeah, I definitely, if you do build a rack and you do install um, a polyur, or not a polyur thing, but if you do install a plywood center, I would recommend adding in some like grit adhesive or grit texture to the top layer of polyurethane, just to again, give it that little bit of extra texture. You could also go through and lay down some um, like grip tape for skateboards, things like that. But overall, Eh, it is what it is. I'm not too concerned about it at this point. In the future, when we eventually move, I'll probably get rid of it. Um, but for right now, it works just fine and I just make do. Uh, one thing as well that I didn't mention, still kind of back hidden in the corner, is our heater. So it's a 6,000 watt electric heater that we installed um, last winter. Not this winter, winter, but the one before it. That thing is hooked up to a, an Alexa smart plug that runs through a relay that powers the um, circuit breaker. So with that, what I'm able to do is basically control the start, stop, interval, whatever, basically control the heater from um, an Alexa app. So basically I'm able to go through and say like, if I know I'm gonna be working out at 5 a.m. in the morning, I can have it turn on at say four o'clock, preheat for an hour before I get in here. And then that way the garage isn't 50 degrees, it's up to a nice 60, 65 um, in the middle of winter when I'm starting my workout. So definitely a quality of life thing that I would highly recommend if you guys are in a cold climate to start looking into, um, especially now while it's summer before you hit winter. And the other thing in terms of insulation that I would recommend, make sure your garage door is fully insulated as well as your walls before you look at a heater. Because if your walls and your garage door are not insulated, a heater's not gonna do anything for you. Because with everything, without the heater, this garage almost never drops below about 50, 45, 50 degrees during the winter, even when it's in the zeros or even when it's negative degrees outside. Um, it just stays pretty nice in here, even like manageable with a couple layers on, so. Now, something that some of the more astute of you may have noticed is there's a piece that's actually missing from my gym. Um, if you guys have seen some of my pictures over on Instagram of what it was about two, three weeks ago, uh, or if you guys have seen my most popular video, uh, I no longer have my reverse hyper. So I actually got rid of it just a couple weeks ago, mainly because it did not get used enough to warrant how much space it took up. I originally built it just to kind of try out the movement, see if I would be able to incorporate it and if I liked to incorporate it into my training. And honestly, just after about a year of using it uh, on and off, it just ended up becoming more of a table than I actually used, this, used the machine. So I ended up getting rid of it 
Def definitely am glad that I did because kind of that space behind me near the garage was a little bit cramped with having the lat pull down, the functional trainer, the leg press, the leg extension, all of that kind of crammed right underneath the garage door. Just getting rid of that opened up a lot more space, allowing me to move the uh, lat pull down up against this wall on the other side of my uh, rack, and then also allowing me to kind of move things around over there. And it just feels a lot more open and inviting in the gym now. It, it doesn't feel as cramped. Only downside is I did lose my table, so I need to figure something out for kind of tracking and writing down all my workouts, setting things down. Right now I'm just kind of setting it down on equipment as I'm not using it, but it would be nice to have a little bit of a table in here again, just so that I'm able to use something to write on because I like to write down all of my workouts. Anyway, that is the gym. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna take a second to allow you guys to go down and hit that like button. Maybe comment what your favorite piece of equipment is in here. Comment, let me know what you think I should get next. Cause as you know, if you have a garage gym, the process is never ending. <laughs> you should see the, or the look I'm getting from my wife right now. But just let me know what you guys think you would, what, if this was your gym, what would you add next? So. That's been it for me guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Go ahead and hit that like button like I said. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the different reviews, product reviews, workouts, anything that might be coming for this channel. Definitely helps out. It helps me produce more content for you and basically helps the YouTube algorithm to kind of show my channel to more people. So as always, thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Burr, 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 burr.